Hello there everyone and welcome to another edition of Lydia's Crafty Corner with me Lydia in my little crafty corner. So today we're going to be playing with the very beautiful Build a Flower Lelia and we're also going to be creating a really bold beautiful background too. So as you can see I am using the Build a Flower Lelia and I'm also going to stamp the outline using some gold ink. So this is the antique gold from Alta New. You could use the enchanted gold if you want to as well. So using this gold as our outline is going to give it a different look than using black. It's going to be a little bit more subtle but it is still very very pretty and it does still show up the details as well. So I did stamp this four times but in the end I only ended up using three of the little flowers or large flowers as they are. So it's completely up to you if you want to stamp the fourth one and save it for a different project. Next up I am going to start with the first layer of the flower. Now for this one I'm going to use my lightest of the colours and this one I have the pale mauve. So I'm going to stamp them into place on all of my images just making sure that they fit within that outline. It is helpful to have the layering guide off to the side of you can, so you can see exactly where these are going to go. I'm then going to move on to the second layer of the flower and for this one I'm going to be using the amethyst ink. Again I'm lining this up with the help of the layering guide just off to the side so I can see where these are going to line up but it's mostly just the tips of these petals when I do line them up. Once I have that I'm then going to take the third layer. Now this is going to add the petals at the bottom and also that darker centre to the trumpet. So for this one I am using the grape agate. So again just lining that up into place. I'm lining up the tips of the petals as well as the inside of the trumpet before I do press that one down. I'm going to move on to the fourth layer. For this one I'm going to be using the plum. I really love how deep and rich this purple colour is and this is just going to add some darker shadows to the trumpet of the flower for this one. I'm then going to move on to the fifth layer. Now I'm going to be using the charcoal suit. Now this is a really dark grey just to add in those extra details around the trumpet of the flower. Now you could use a second layer of the plum if you wanted to but I decided to go for a grey. For the little centre of the trumpet I am going to be using the Misty Moor ink. So I'm just going to ink that up and then stamp that into place where there's a little bit of white showing on the trumpet. You just want to want to get that in the centre. Don't worry too much about going over the other stamping as this won't show up on it because it's such a light colour. So once I've finished the whole flower I'm then going to move on to the stem. So I've just added this onto a larger block and I'm going to be using the marshland ink to add the stem and leaves in one go. So I'm just lining this up within the outline that we do have and that beautiful gold is still peeking through as well. So once I have that I'm then going to move on to the second layer of the leaves. Now this one has two different pieces so I'm going to pop them into place onto my image just exactly where they need to be. I can then pick them up with an acrylic block and then use them as one stamp. For this one I'm going to be using the sea forest ink so I'm just going to ink that up and then stamp all of these little images into place onto the leaves. It adds a really great detail even though it's a small stamp I just think it's really really pretty. So once we've done that we're going to add the smallest of the piece and this is just going to be where like the bud kind of pops out of the stem and for this one I am going to be using the misty more ink again. Once I have all of my images stamped I can then go ahead and cut them out. So with the Builder Flower you do get the dies included. So I'm just going to pop the die into place around the image, add a little bit of tape and then run that through my die cutting machine to get these beautiful die cuts. For my card I'm using a four and a quarter by five and a half white card base and I also have a piece of black cardstock which is a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around. I'm just going to place my images into place so I can figure out which kind of sentiment I want to use. I am using a cross the pond stamp set from Alta New so when I find one that fits in the perfect position I'm just going to pop that onto my block. As we're going to do some heat embossing I have added some anti-static powder down before stamping my sentiment with some embossing ink. Once that's nicely stamped into place I can then pop some antique gold embossing powder over the top and then heat set. So I just really love this embossed effect here. 
I'm then going to take some antique gold. So this is the same one that we use to do the outlines. I'm just going to take one of the leaf images from the stamp set and I'm going to stamp this onto that black background that we have. This will add a little bit more detail. It's not going to take too much away, but it is going to give us a really opulent look to the whole card as a whole. So I am making sure that I do stamp over the edges just to make sure that it looks like a continuous piece on there. Once that's done, I can then pop that into place onto the card base just to make sure where I want my flowers to be. Again, I'm just rearranging these to make sure that's exactly where I want them. Once I'm happy with where they're going to be, I then decided to add a little bit of a black marker outline around the flowers. So this will really help our flowers look a little bit more seamless on that background like they're meant to be there, not without the white border. So once I have all of that done, I can then add my card together. So what I'm doing is I'm adding some foam tape behind the flowers, but then I'm also adding some glue tape behind the leaves and stem. Now this one I just kind of adapted a little bit. I've cut off one of the leaves and then added the marker just to make sure there was no white showing before adding this one into place. I'm then gonna add the whole panel to my card base and a little bit more dimension. So I'm gonna again add some foam tape behind there. I can then flip the whole card over and then cut off any overhanging pieces from behind. And here is the card complete. I really do hope that you like the card and that you've enjoyed the video as well. If you do create a card that was inspired by this, it'd be great if you do share because we'd love to see. Thank you so much for watching everyone and we'll see you again really, really soon. Bye bye. Hello there crafty friend, Lydia here. Just popping in to say that you can get your daily dose of crafting tips, techniques and tutorials just like this by subscribing to the Altenew YouTube channel. All you need to do is click on that little bell up there and you will never miss a video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.